Good evening, I'm Genevieve Wood, and thank you all very much for joining us for what I think will be a very special evening uh, here at the Heritage Foundation. Uh, we are gathered tonight to honor uh, and to celebrate both our past and our future here at Heritage, and also to witness the passing of the baton from one president to the next Heritage president. Our audience includes ambassadors, uh, members of Congress and the administration, and leaders of the conservative movement. And we're delighted that you all are here with us tonight uh, to share in what is really a joyous and momentous occasion in the history of heritage. We're gonna begin as we always do with an invocation. And to do that tonight, I am honored to introduce Father Michael Sheeran, a Jesuit who was for many years the president of Ed Fulner's alma mater, Regis University in Denver. He now lives in Washington where he is the president of the Association of Jesuit Colleges and Universities. Father Mike. Let's just bow our heads for a moment. Lord, you created a good but incomplete world. And then you trusted your creatures to use their lives to make that world better. At a milestone moment for Ed, for Kay, for heritage, we pause to thank you for entrusting this organization with its great impact on shaping American society. Thank you especially for Ed's vision and his integrity through the years in building a reputation for careful, well-reasoned analysis and advocacy so that all manner of organizations respect the, tr the trustworthiness of Heritage's positions. Thank you for the life of thoughtful commitment that has shaped Kay through struggles, made her a trusted voice, guaranteed her judgment for the future. And we thank you, too, for the talent in this room. Women and men of ability and education, people of insight and dedication to traditional values that are summed up under the mantle of heritage. We pray that each one of us may walk with the same care and integrity that marks Ed and Kay, so that we too may leave your world, Lord, a better place because we were here. Amen. Thank you, Father Mike. Well, as I mentioned, the room tonight is filled with special guests. And I think there are probably no more special guests uh, than the five people I want to introduce now, which are the grandchildren of our incoming president, Kay James, and her husband, Charles. So I'm going to invite them to come on up to the stage. Sydney, Brandon, and Andrew Lovell, and Madeline and Charles James. And they are going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I believe it was President Reagan who said, you never want to follow children or cute animals after the speech. Great job, guys. Well, President George W. Bush, when speaking here at Heritage uh, back in 2008, 
remarked that in Washington, presidents come and go. Except, he said, except at the Heritage Foundation. <laughs> and that's because, ladies and gentlemen, you don't mess with a good thing. And Ed Fulner's leadership of Heritage for over 40 plus years has been a very good thing for Heritage, for the conservative movement, and for America. Please join me in welcoming to the stage the founder of the Heritage Foundation, Edwin J. Fulmer. Thank you, Genevieve, distinguished guests, members of the Diplomatic Corps, General, Mr. Secretary. I'm so proud of to be here tonight, and I'm proud of our institution that's made really a very significant difference time and again since we first opened our door in 1973. I remember how we made a difference with our first mandate for leadership that President Reagan relied upon to guide his administration. We made a difference with our support for SDI that enabled Reagan to end the Cold War, as Margaret Thatcher said, without firing a shot. We made a difference with the Homeland Security Plan we produced before 9-11. We made a difference with our promotion of vouchers that made school choice a reality now in the majority of our states. We make a difference every year with our resource bank meeting that deepens and widens our shared conservative vision. We continue to make a difference as we have just seen by the University of Pennsylvania's think tank program ranking heritage as number one in influencing public policy. It just came out last week. It was very timely fashion. How did we manage all of this and so much more? First, by hiring the best and the brightest people who create sensible conservative solutions for public policy problems. By building a devoted group of hundreds of thousands of supporters of members around the world and around the country that give us both financial and intellectual independence. Our mission is simple. The Heritage Foundation is committed to building an America where freedom, opportunity, prosperity, and civil society flourish. These aren't just words on the elevator and over the front door. We really believe them. On occasions like this, we take time to count our blessings, and our blessings are numerous. First, that the Heritage Foundation is now a permanent Washington institution. We're blessed to have a wonderful board of trustees. I thank them all. We're blessed to have senior colleagues like Phil Trula, Kim Holmes, Coley Stimson, who came back to help write the ship. We're blessed to have dedicated people who come to work every day to do the research, exchange the ideas, raise the funds, promote the studies, and keep the coffee and the frescas flowing. <laughs> What's the secret of Heritage's success? It starts because we stand on the shoulders of giants. Again, Ronald Reagan, who said once at a Heritage Foundation event, Freedom is a fragile thing and never more than one generation from extinction. It must be fought for and defended constantly by each new generation. Standing with giants like our late patron, Lady Margaret Thatcher, who told Heritage, it is the task of conservatives to raise, to revive a series of Western identity and unity and service with conservative thinkers like our late distinguished fellow Russell Kirk who said, a true conservative will strive to, strive to conserve the three things that together mark our civilization, our Judeo-Christian faith, humane letters, and the social and political institutions that shape us. 
with our classical liberal friend, Nobel laureate Milton Friedman, who admonished us that the really important ethical problems are those that face any individual in a free society, that is, what he should do with his freedom. Today, some Americans are worried, deeply worried, about the direction of our nation and the spirit of the city, which seems to be ruled by rank partisanship, unapologetic pandering, and reckless rhetoric. But it's precisely at times like this, times of uncertainty, that heritage can make its greatest contribution. A blessing to our nation with our emphasis on first principles and ordered liberty and our commitment to the tried and the true rather than to the new and the trendy. I believe President Trump understands this. I believe that's why he and his team have already embraced 64% of the policy recommendations in our current mandate for leadership on on tax policy, deregulation, nominations, and in so many other areas. Yes, these are unsettling times. But here at Heritage, we've been through them before in the, our short history, going back to Vietnam, to Watergate, to the Malays, to 9-11, to the Great Recession, to Barack Obama. And each time, Heritage has helped our fellow citizens get back on track. It's what conservatives do and we do it well as we reflect on these blessings. Those blessings. Today, we welcome the greatest blessing of recent years, our new president, Kay Coles James. <laughs> Kay is a true conservative leader, a Renaissance woman who has done it all as the Director of the Federal Office of Personnel Management, as Secretary of Virginia's Health and Human Services Department, as Dean at Regent University, as founder of the Gloucester Institute, as a best-selling author, as the Senior Vice President of the Family Research Council, as the Convention Secretary for a Republican National Convention, as a member of the NASA Advisory Council, and as a longtime member of our own Board of Trustees. Kay, we thank you for everything. My friends, America is an exceptional nation because of the American spirit. That spirit, bold and pragmatic, individualistic and communitarian, generous and prudent. That's the American spirit that has sustained the American experiment for more than two years. What more important pledge can we at the Heritage Foundation make than to preserve and protect that American spirit for this generation and generations yet to come? Kay, that's your challenge. Kay, it's my honor, my privilege, and my delight to give you a token of our esteem made of marble from the old Capitol steps as a reminder of your new position and to welcome you as the president of what we modestly call the most important think tank in the most important city <laughs> in the most important country in the world. It survived 150 years of the Capitol. I think it, it survived survive that. <laughs> Oh my word, that is gorgeous. <laughs> it's been an emotional day, as you might imagine. First of all, thank you, Ed, and I wanna thank each and every one of you who's sitting here this evening. It's truly an honor for me, and uh, just looking out and seeing so many friends and so many family, it's just a very special evening. 
Ed, since you and Paul Weirich created the Heritage Foundation 45 years ago, it has shown as a leading center of excellence. It nurtures thought-provoking research, vitally important dialogue, and unparalleled creativity. It generates solutions that shape our great nation. It provides fortitude to our allies and freedom-loving people around the world. And most important of all, it has a deeply positive impact on the lives of so many Americans. That's why serving as its president is not only an extraordinary privilege, it is the culmination of a personal journey and a professional career. Filling your shoes, Ed, is a daunting challenge, and I assure you I will give it my best effort. You've not only been our leader, but a close friend and mentor to so many of us throughout the conservative movement. Ed, I'll always owe you a debt of gratitude that's simply too big for me to describe to this audience. I'm also grateful to Phil. There you are. As conservatives across America and the world know, Phil Truluck has not just been an integral part of the Heritage family, he's the skilled craftsman who took the movement's ideas and helped them make a powerful reality. Thank you, Phil. So Ed and Phil, from the bottom of my heart and from so many people in this room, thank you. I also want to express my profound thanks to my friends and now bosses, the Board of Trustees for their support. Your confidence and unanimous vote are gifts and I will work as hard as is humanly possible to lead this extraordinary organization that you and I love so much. I want to thank our remarkable staff and members, too, for your warm welcome and the support you've given Heritage and me throughout this transition. One of the most important jobs any CEO faces is to put together a high-performing team. And that part of my job was already done when I arrived. I inherited scholars and staff who are the most driven and dedicated team anyone could ever hope to lead. No wonder an overwhelming majority of our members recently reported that they feel good and are extremely positive about this transition. That's music to my ears. And last but never least, I want to thank my friends, my family, and most of all, my wonderful husband, Charles, all of whom have made a special point to join us here for this celebration. Many of you have been with me every step of the way, and as we embark on this new chapter, we are blessed to be guided by a history that is rich in success. From historic tax cuts and missile defense to welfare reform and school choice and so much more, Heritage has been nothing less than a solutions factory. And the solutions our scholars create here change America and the world. Take, for example, Heritage's work to promote economic growth and opportunity for all. We knew what Margaret Thatcher meant when she said, there can be no liberty unless there is economic liberty. That's why Heritage has always fought misguided policies that would suffocate our future. And why Heritage leads the way for lower taxes, common sense regulation, limited government, rule of law, and economic freedom. Those are just some of the many areas where Heritage scholars and members have had a profound impact. You can see their mark, too, in education, health care, and welfare reform, in our defense and foreign policies, and in the culture and communities of our great nation. It's precisely because of the scope and impact of Heritage's work that President Ronald Reagan paid us a very special compliment when he said, and I quote, Success in politics is about issues, ideas, and the vision we have for our country and the world. In fact, the very sum and substance of the work of the Heritage Foundation. President Reagan 
mark this, whose birthday is tomorrow, by the way, was absolutely right. The Heritage Foundation is a very special place, an unstoppable force in American conservatism. The home of truly extraordinary scholars and staff and a network of diehard alumni, dedicated trustees, and ben visionary benefactors. But our work isn't done. Because we continue to be confronted by problems that must be solved. The challenges we now face strike directly at the core principles this institution holds so dear. Free enterprise, limited government, individual freedom, traditional values, and national security. These challenges are evident everywhere in failing schools and overflowing opioid clinics, in rural towns and urban centers, in Appalachia and the Rust Belt. Surviving or surveying them, I can't help but recall Abraham Lincoln's warning to us. All the armies of Europe and Asia could not by force take a drink from the Ohio River or make a track on the Blue Ridge in the trial of a thousand years. No, if destruction be our lot, we must ourselves be its author and finisher. As a nation of free men, we will live forever or die by suicide. It doesn't take long to see that President Lincoln was right. As we gather in this room tonight, brave men and women in uniform are defending our nation and protecting freedom-loving people everywhere. But at the same time, the nation that they serve is suffering destruction from within. That, ladies and gentlemen, is why the work of the Heritage Foundation is so important. We stand as a bulwark against that destruction, and we serve as a battleship for liberty. Difficult days lie ahead, to be sure, but I have total confidence we will succeed. You see, our nation has faced perilous threats before, and each time Americans wondered whether they would prevail, and each time we did. And so it must be and will be again. Fortunately, our fight resonates in the hearts and minds of virtually every American. Having grown up in the heat of segregation, I know America's capacity for compassion because even then there were those who stepped forward and I experienced their kindness in so many wonderful ways. In fact, I'm standing here because of the decency of so many. Decency that continues to drive our nation forward today. Unfortunately, many Americans are misinformed. What pulses in their hearts is honest, but what resonates in their minds is so often untrue. Like us, they want liberty, equality, opportunity. But unlike us, they mistakenly believe that those ideals can be achieved by the failed policies of the left. As a result, they simply don't know that liberal policy threatens the very ideals they treasure or that conservative policy upholds them. But that problem is our path forward. Why? Because we believe, we develop, we fight for, these are the policies that truly help, those that you and I believe in. These are the policies that truly help and empower people. Conservative policies help kids get a great education and parents find meaningful work. They help families live in peace and communities be safe and secure. And that's why I'm a conservative. And it's why I think it's so important for us to take our positive message to every corner of America and to freedom-loving people everywhere. There's no place we won't go because there's no one who won't be helped by free enterprise, limited government, 
individual freedom, traditional values, and a secure nation. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we will go to college campuses. We will go to minority communities. We will go to suburbia and to urban centers. Along the way, we will, as my mentor and friend Jay Parker put it, disagree without being disagreeable. We can do this. We will engage without seeking to enrage. We will always be tough but never mean. We will grow the congregation and not just preach to the choir. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we will open the hearts and minds and doors of the millions of Americans who really are conservative, but just don't know it yet. Together, we will build an America shaped by our founding principles and ready for the future. Imagine with me for a minute what that America will be like. Imagine an America where free markets reign so there are enough jobs for everyone to realize their dreams. Imagine an America with a strong national defense where our borders are secure, our communities are healthy, and our streets are safe. Imagine an America where civil society flourishes, life is protected, families are whole, and every child, no matter their race, religion, income, or address, gets a great education. And imagine an America where liberty, equality, and opportunity aren't just the gifts that you and I inherited, they are the endowment we pass on to future generations. That America, the one we imagine, is the America we can build today. Over the years, I've had the opportunity to fight for things I believe in, for school integration and education equality, for welfare reform and personal empowerment, for the sanctity and dignity of human life and safety from drugs, for an end to racism and an opportunity for all. <laughs> I'm used to fighting, and the fight will continue, I promise you. Each of those fights was hard, that's for sure, but just imagine what would have happened if we hadn't taken on those battles. That's something we should keep in our hearts and minds every day, but it feels particularly meaningful today. Where's Jay? As my good friend Jay Timmons pointed out to me, and I don't know how you know this, today marks a very special anniversary. As of today, the Berlin Wall has been down for exactly as many days as it stood. We are there. <laughs> Had America not rallied against that wall of shame, it might still be standing. Instead, we look down the barrel of Soviet might and in President Reagan's immortal words, called on the Soviet Union to tear down that wall. Fighting for liberty is just as important for school children, families, and workers as it is for nations. And in keeping with those wise words President Reagan shared with us, it's my favorite Reagan quote, freedom, he said, is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same, or one day we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in the United States where men were free. I have no intention of telling my grandchildren, Sydney, Brandon, 
Madeline, Andrew, and Charles, that their America is less free than the one I inherited. Nor do I intend to ever forget George Washington's guidance that we should always humbly implore the Almighty's protection and favor. And so together and with God's grace, we will fight for what we believe in. Because my friends, America is worth fighting for. Thank you. Thank you. Just a little something from Charles and me personally to say thank you. I want you to open it. I'll Can hold it so it won't drop. Like I <laughs> oh my gosh. On the front, there it is. <laughs> you see the Heritage Foundation. And on the inside, you will see a collage of some of the <laughs> highest moments here at the Heritage Foundation. That stuck me right there. There you go, right in the middle. Right in the middle. Fantastic. Oh, thank, you, thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To lead us in our benediction this evening is Pastor Steve Constable. Uh, Pastor S Constable, as you will notice from his slight accent, uh, was born and raised in the United Kingdom. Uh, he and his family have served churches in London, Chicago, and upstate New York uh, before in 2004 becoming a senior pastor at Stony Point Church in Richmond, Virginia, which is where the James attend today. Pastor, come on up. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, as we close our celebrations tonight, we want to recognize that you are the giver of every good gift. We want to thank you for the gifts of Ed and Kay. We want to commit them to you as Ed now closes his presidency and Kay begins hers at the Heritage Foundation. We ask particularly, Father, your blessing on Kay and Charles and their family and ask that you would use the unique strength and experience that you have given her to bless the foundation and its work. Our prayer is, Lord, that through this institution, you would continue to bless and increasingly change America so that what is right and noble and good in your sight might yet be truly said of her. We ask for your blessing and on all of our endeavors. In your name we ask this. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Constable. Well, we are going to wrap our program tonight with a very special performance. Uh, Whitley Phipps has performed on some very big stages, from the White House and the Vatican to the Kennedy Center and Saturday Night Live. <laughs> Not sure which stage is bigger. His audiences are equally impressive. Mother Teresa, when she was awarded the Congressional Gold Medal. Rosa Parks on her 77th birthday. And just about every American president since Jimmy Carter. Tonight, we are honored to have him perform for us. Heal Our Land is a song Whitley performed on the steps of the United States Capitol during the inaugural ceremony for President George W. Bush in 2005. An interesting history note here. It was written by Janice Cat Perry and Senator Orrin Hatch. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Whitley Phipps.
healing land. Please grant us peace today and strengthen all who lack the faith to call on thee each day. Heal our land. Please keep us safe and free. Watch over all who understand the need for liberty. Heal our land, heal our land, and guide us with thy hand. Keep us ever on the path of liberty. Heal our land, heal our land, and help us understand that we must put our trust in thee if we would be free. Heal our land. Please help us find our way, for in thy word we find our strength if we look up each day. Heal our land and fill us with thy love. Keep us upon the path of truth that comes from heaven above. Heal our land, heal our land, and guide us with thy hand. Keep us ever on the path of liberty. Heal our land, heal our land, and help us understand that we must put our trust in thee. If we would be free, protect us by the power of thy rod, and keep us as one nation under God. Heal our land, heal our land, and guide us with thy hand. Keep us ever on the path of liberty. Heal our land, heal our land, and help us understand that we must put our trust in thee. If we would be free. I'm going to just share one prayer together. Listen as we share together in this prayer. And you can sing if you wish along with me. Yes. the storm clouds gather far across the sea let us pledge allegiance to the land that's free let us all be grateful for the land so fair as we raise our voices in a solemn prayer. God bless 
bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam god bless america my home sweet home god bless america my home Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of our wonderful board of trustees, many who are here, our founder, Ed Fulner, our new president, Kay Coles-James, the staff of the Heritage Foundation, thank you all for being with us here to celebrate tonight, for helping us to imagine America, and we encourage you to please join us now out in the foyer for a reception. Thank you, and have a great evening.